In our next lesson on metabolism and bioenergetics, we want to look at metabolic pathways and intermediates. We find only a few steps are needed to convert polymers to monomers. Those are the processes of digestion. However, when we get ready to catabolize monomers, or for that reason build them up, there are many steps that are required. A metabolic pathway is simply a series of chemical reactions that are needed to entirely break down that monomer or to build it up. Because each step is a different chemical reaction, each step is generally catalyzed by a different enzyme, and they're always regulated in some way. But why are there so many steps? Well, we start with our monomer, and it represents a large energy source. By breaking that into smaller components, we have smaller sources or energy carriers, and there's less chance for waste. In other words, we're going to recover more of the energy by breaking it up into smaller particles. Smaller packets means the cells don't spend what they don't need. In other words, why would you break a $50 bill if you just need $1? And so by breaking it up into these smaller packets, we can spend them as we need them, rather than spending the whole molecule. Another benefit of these multiple steps is we get multiple intermediates or metabolites, and we find that we can use those in multiple processes. There are literally thousands of chemical reactions in a cell, and therefore thousands of intermediates. We find, however, that only a handful appear as precursors or as products and pathways that feed into or from other molecules. In other words, there are some very common intermediates, and that's the benefit of getting an overview of these metabolic pathways. We're going to look at the key players in glycolysis and some of the other pathways that we'll look at. And these are pictured at the bottom of the screen here. You do need to know these structures. So these are all breakdown products of glucose. Glucose is initially broken down to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. That's in glycolysis. And the end product of that pathway is pyruvate. Then we have the transition step to convert that to acetyl-CoA. These are very key intermediates, as we'll see in just a moment here, and you need to know these structures. Well, how do these three key players fit into multiple pathways? Well, as illustrated here, the green shaded box indicates they're all breakdown products of glucose. If we're an organism that can fix carbon, we can take CO2 and actually build a glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate molecule rather than catabolize it from glucose. We can also take glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and convert that to a triacylglycerol, so we can use that in an anabolic pathway. Here's the molecule pyruvate, a breakdown product of glycolysis. We can convert that directly to the amino acid alanine, or we can convert that to oxaloacetate and then use that to build other amino acids. The last breakdown product, acetyl-CoA, we can fully oxidize that to CO2, or we can take that and to convert it to fatty acids and make triacylglycerols. So you can see why you have these very common intermediates because they feed into and from multiple pathways. In the next video lesson, we want to look at the general types of reactions that occur during catabolism and anabolism, and we will start to look at the cofactors that participate in that process.